Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me once again for another Thought for the Day. Today is Monday the 8th of June. Now, uh, tomorrow I should have been heading off for a pastor's conference in St Andrews. Uh, every year the Scottish Baptist Pastors Conference is held there, second week in June, and we stay in the university accommodation there, uh, which is um, most acceptable. And it's just a, a wonderful week. Um, it's a three-day conference. Uh, St Andrews in and of itself is a nice place to go to. Uh, loads of uh, different types of coffee shops, etc. Um, coffee shop for every everybody's taste. Um, also, of course, it's good to catch up with other pastors, uh, some of whom, well, we never see from one year to the next. Uh, so again, it's good to uh, to meet up and to catch up and to enjoy the fellowship. The main thing, of course, is the conference itself. Uh, and it's always good to uh, to know what's going on. The speakers are sourced well in advance. Uh, we get a programme, we know what to expect. And uh, as I said, we all head off and meet there for the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday um, of that particular week. Now, uh, the other thing, of course, is uh, the food is wonderful. Now, uh, when I say that, um, I don't mean the meals that we get. They are, of course, uh, wonderful and we're very well catered for. Um, but it's the spiritual food that I'm talking about. Uh, because, friends, um, as I suppose I'm speaking for a lot of other pastors and ministers as well, uh, we spend the best part of the year uh, just giving and giving and giving. And it's nice to get something back. Um, pastors or ministers were just like anybody else in the sense that we need to be spiritually fed as well. So it's good that this conference is led on. The fellowship's enjoyable and as I said uh, we get fed spiritually speaking as well. Now last year was especially good. Uh, we had a speaker in um, Pastor Malcolm Duncan. Maybe some of you know him. He used to be the pastor down at uh, Gold Hill uh, near London. Uh, a year or two ago we moved back to Belfast. He's the pastor now of Dundonald Elam Pentecostal Church and he's being blessed in his ministry there. So he was a wonderful speaker and he came and he spoke for three days on the subject of the Holy Spirit and it was wonderful. Uh, it was challenging, it was informative, uh, it was very refreshing and um, I suppose that's what the conference was all about as well, for us to be refreshed and return to our own churches, as it were, energised and uh, ready to go. <clears throat> so uh, that was last year. Now, as I said, we should have been going again tomorrow, uh, but, uh, well, uh, because of the circumstances, it has been cancelled. So we'll have to wait until next year, God willing, um, for our next conference. Uh, but you know friends we all need fed um, in the physical sense as well as the spiritual sense. And if for example we uh, only had one meal a week, um, again just talking about regular food, if we had just one meal a week uh, that wouldn't be sufficient friends. That's what we would call basically a starvation diet. In fact, on one meal a week, we probably would starve. Um, we need regular meals. Uh, we need good nutritional food and we need it on a regular basis. And that's the way forward um, for a healthy diet and to keep ourselves healthy as well. Now, when you take that principle and apply it to the spiritual side of things, the principles are exactly the same, friends. Um, we need to be fed spiritually to keep ourselves healthy in the spiritual sense. And we don't want to starve, spiritually speaking, either. And again, if I just take the same example, if we were to get just one meal a week, if we were, for example, to try and survive as Christians on, say, one sermon on a Sunday, if that's all the spiritual food that we were to get, 
Well, again, that's a starvation diet. One sermon a week, friends, isn't going to uh, allow us to grow spiritually, especially if it's one of my sermons. So we need good, regular spiritual food. Now, we have a lot of resources, friends. Uh, in this part of the world, we're blessed because we've got, um, well, we've a wonderful legacy of Christian literature alone. Uh, but now we can get so much on the internet and we can have fellowship and we can have uh, teaching and um, and and, and uh, lessons from, from other people as well. Uh, we are blessed in that sense. But there's nothing to beat what the Lord Jesus Christ can give. I'm reminded of a verse in uh, uh, John chapter 6 and verse 35. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ there says, literally, to quote him, I am the bread of life. Uh, and again, as soon as his listeners would have heard him say, I am, uh, they would have known exactly um, what he was saying because way back in Exodus when Moses was talking to the Lord he says look um, you've spoken to me Lord but I'm going to go back and tell people uh, about all this uh, who am I going to tell them uh, that I've been talking to and God says to Moses tell them I am sent you because the Lord had said I am who I am so Everybody in the days of the Lord Jesus would have known that. So when he came along and said, I am, they would have said to themselves immediately, here is someone speaking to us as if he were God himself. The message wouldn't have been lost on them. And the Lord just doesn't do it the once, friends. He, he says it seven times in the Gospel of John. There are seven I am sayings. And this is just one of them. I am the bread of life. And he goes on to explain what that means as well. He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. So the Lord Jesus Christ uh, has the bread of life. And we have to feed on that bread. We have to feed on the Lord Jesus Christ, as it were. We have to feed on his word. And don't forget, he is the incarnate word of God, the, the Logos. So friends, we're being told here uh, very clearly that the Lord can supply all the spiritual food that we need. But sometimes it's overlooked. Uh, we have to go to him to get that food. Um, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me. You have to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and partake of this wonderful bread of life. So I'm asking you, friends, um, what's your spiritual diet like? Uh, are you feeding on the word of God? Are you feeding on the incarnate word? Are you going to the Lord Jesus Christ as a believer? Uh, are, you, are you taking what he is giving? Are you drinking deeply from that wonderful living water uh, that he can supply as well? If you're doing that, you have a good, solid spiritual diet and you'll grow as a Christian. And we have to grow as Christians, friends. There's, there's no use praying the prayer or accepting Christ or saying you're a follower and then um, stopping. We have to grow in all sorts of ways as Christians. We can't be the same um, today as we were 5 or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 or more years ago. We've got to grow and to grow we have to have a, a good spiritual diet. We're often reminded that if a little child doesn't grow uh, we take him or her to the doctor to see what's wrong because they should be growing. Same for ourselves friend, uh, friends. We have to grow as Christians. So please make sure you get that spiritual food. We don't want anybody to be on a starvation diet. Just one sermon a week or the equivalent or just snacking or taking some spiritual junk food is not a healthy diet. We have to go often to the Lord Jesus Christ and get some good solid food. So uh, as you do that friends please keep praying 
keep washing your hands, keep looking up, keep safe, and after you've done all that, if you've any time left, well, then you can go and wash your teeth. I think you know what I'm getting at. Okay, thank you for listening, and bye for now.